We begin today with Penny Proud making her directorial debut. Her family thought this was supposed to be a movie, but it turns out it's just a slideshow that shows Penny's blues. Sugar Mama wants to know what blues she got, but she hasn't even started the show, so maybe save those questions for the end. Here's her when she was born, when she graduated kindergarten, and when she learned to ride a bike. Cute and happy. Here's her at 14. No longer a cute little girl, but beautiful young lady who is very unhappy. Oscar tells her that that nobody asked her anything about that. Penny continues though after Trudy shuts down that hater. Penny is unhappy because she has never been allowed to throw a house party. She continues with every achievement she's ever had. Oscar gives the film two thumbs down, too much exposition. Sugar Mama was brought to tears by the performance. Turns out Oscar's just mad because Sugar Mama never let him have a party. Sugar Mama says, that's a lie. We had one the day you came home from the hospital. That happened to be the only day that he was cute. This seems like years of hurt people hurting people all in the same room. Trudy ignores the generational trauma and tells Penny that her and Oscar would be just fine with that. She does pay all the bills, so I could see why. Penny is on the phone with Sticky, securing the DJ for the party. Trudy comes in excited to give Penny these Chuck E. Cheese invitations, and Penny hates them. She already has invitations printed up. Penny's get down. It's gonna be off the heezy. Oscar doesn't understand the eight two question mark part, but she explains that she's gonna be off six shots feeling like Pac, and they'll be partying all night and shit won't stop. He clears it up for her, and everyone is taking their ass home at 8.30. Trudy once again supersedes that and they can go home at 11. Sugar Mama tells Penny it's cool cause they got the after party popping out her house. Trudy wants them to have talent night. Party's about to be lame. Sugar Mama understands that and she invites Lou Rawls, which I don't know that these 14 year olds know who the hell Lou Rawls is. Man, I'm not old enough to really know who Lou Rawls is. In a moment of transparency, I learned who Lou Rawls was at the age of like 16, 17, after watching All About the Benjamins for the umpteenth time. One day I just decided to Google where you'll never find a hairline like mine was from. All that's irrelevant. Penny tells her parents that they're not even invited. Sugar Mama just knows Penny ain't talking to her cause ain't no party like a Sugar Mama party cause a Sugar Mama party don't stop. All right, the next part is wild, but this is a family channel, obviously. So let me clean it up a bit. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water, let that Monday to Friday burn, 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 let that monkey flipper burn. They replaced the swear words with sugar mamas and that's my favorite joke of the episode five minutes in. Trudy's mad because being light skinned has got her in every party before, so she's off to make dinner. Oscar asks off to decide if he was just talking to her mom because you know, he's too cool to not come. He knows about Busta Chimes, U-Tip and Lil Chow Chow. I think he's talking about dog food. Sugar Mama roast him for that played out high top fade and Sugar Mama already got the best two jokes at episode. The next day at school, Penny and her friends are passing out the invitation. Zoe tries to give one to Myron and DJ says, hell nah, we not having a party of lames. Zoe wants to know where the line is. Penny doesn't think that that's very nice at all. The Gross sisters are coming up and they all tuck their chains and invites. So apparently that's the line. The Gross sisters see what everyone is doing standing around and Penny says that they're passing out proud snacks which works the girl sisters rob them but they sell it back to him for a dollar now la cienega walks up and penny don't want to tell her about the party but she ends up being the bigger person and giving this hater an invite la cienega says nah i'm good that's the same night as my party she's handing out cd invitations which is already better when they play it la cienega reveals that jennifer lopez is gonna be there to be fair i think i know more lou raw songs than j-lo songs and i would definitely say you'll never find over jenny from the block but i'm also so not a 14 year old in the year 2000. Her friends reassure her that they'll stick with her through her lame ass party. It's Saturday night and it's three minutes to late. Penny is trying to get her parents upstairs before the party starts. Oscar tells her that unless he's here to see who coming in his house, ain't gonna be no party. The party rings with his first guest. It's Dijanae. She asks for her mom to park in the driveway. Penny turns around, all her friends run across the street to the real party. Penny is now crying on the couch and Sugar Mama walks in talking about how crazy the party across the street is. They got rides, rap, Raffles. She almost won an SUV. It sounds like they're even playing big pun over there, so I think it might be a Puerto Rican day party, so you know that's lit. Penny is mad, but Shook Mama reminds her she didn't even get invited to this party. There's another ring. It's Myron. He got kicked out across the street and heard Penny was desperate for friends and would take anyone. She tries to act like she got better options until her mom tells her to stop being rude. She lets him in and continues being rude. Another ring. Wow, she's doing pretty well. It's the girl sisters. Penny tries to tell them that it's an invite only party and they 
pull out the invites they found in every trash can in the school. Penny runs upstairs crying. Trudy goes up and checks on her and Penny says that she's gonna get clowned for not even having her friends pull up. Trudy asks what about her friends downstairs? She says the nerds and the monsters aren't her friends. Trudy tells her that we don't call people out their name. I'll add that she don't even have any friends so maybe don't push away the few people willing to spend a Saturday night with your loser ass. She got some damn nerve calling people nerds. Oscar calls them downstairs. Sugar Mama wasn't lying. She actually got Lou Rawls. Trudy starts riding him and I've been trying to tell y'all that Oscar and Trudy got a freaky ass relationship. Myron doesn't know who Lou Rawls is and says his parents don't let him listen to rap. Gross sisters come up and they're the only ones with culture and start naming all the Lou Rawls bangers. Love is a hurting thing, Dead End Street, Tobacco Road. Lou even lets everybody know that he did do a little bit of rapping on Tobacco Road. Lou thinks that Penny's friends are really nice and she reminds him that she has zero friends. They're ready for games and Myron suggests a bunch of lame ones, but Sugar Mama just pulls out Twista, or I should say Twister, not the rapper who be rapping fast. Penny's still mad over here. The Gross Sisters let Sugar Mama know they ain't never lost a game of Twista, but Sugar Mama tells them if you beat me, I can make you a celebrity over a nod. The Gross Sisters continue to be amazing house guests, even though their host is constantly being rude to everyone, including Lou Rawls. It's Nubia's turn to do some twister and she's so confident she got balance, she even goes and sprays some banaka in Oscar's rank ass mouth. It's Sugar Mama's turn and she gets right to her spot. She ain't lost since FDR and she still ain't lose up to the Biden administration. Nubia gotta give props. Penny is still being lame and everyone has to convince her to have fun at her own party. She proceeds to just donkey kick Oscar in the grill and ruin the game. Now it's time for the talent show and and I got my money on Lou Rawls. Trudy's first, and she's gonna tell a joke. Why did the monkey fall out of the tree? Huh? Anybody know? Because he was dead. Man, what the hell is wrong with her? That's a terrible joke. The Gross Sisters are next, and they do an amazing rendition of Danny Boy. Lou Rawls knows talent, so he tries to see if they'll make career out singing. They say that tragically there's too many crooks in the music business. What a shame. Penny's turn, and she decides to do some magic. She needs a strand of hair. And Nubia volunteers one of Myron's. Penny then pours a bunch of water on on the table and has everyone look real close. Then she just splash everybody right in the face. Man, what the hell is wrong with her? She's about to get her ass beat by either her parents or the gross sisters, so she runs upstairs. Lou Rawls comes and checks on her and she asks this grown man to get out of her bedroom. He says, are you sure? And bruh, yes, I don't know you, Lou Rawls. He tells her that when you got a family that loves you that much, you have everything you'll ever need. Then he breaks into song. You'll never find as long as as you live someone who loves you tender like we do you'll never find no matter where you search someone who cares about you the way that we do Trudy even walks over with the cakes out and I think she's still trying to bag Lou Rawls. Lou Rawls has officially saved the day. Penny apologizes for being a jerk and Myron is clearly sick of it cause he says she sure has. They'll forgive her if she plays one more game of Twister. Penny gets another knock at the doorbell. It's her disloyal ass friends. They're here because La Cienega's party is whack. Some old lady and her dog ate all the food and she didn't get J-Lo. They got T-Lo, Trini Lopez, and he's over there doing La Bamba. Penny slams the door in their face. Trudy walks up and teaches her not to act out of emotions and pettiness, so Penny lets everyone in, even La Cienega, who she wants to show her favorite magic trick. 